This morning on today's Consumer, finding the best deal at a flea market. If anybody knows how to find a good deal, it is Janice Lieberman. <laughs> so we sent her to one of the largest flea markets in the country to see what she could find at the lowest possible price. Oh, it's so much fun. We have to go shopping. Now, I have to tell you, this is the season to get down and dirty and really search for bargains. So I decided to challenge two other professionals and go shopping with them to see who would get the best deal. These flea market fanatics are highly skilled at hunting for treasures. Their mission? To find a real gem at the lowest price they can negotiate. You got 85 on it. What can we do? Do 50? But can a novice do the same? We asked Miller Gaffney, an art aficionado, and John Bruno, an antique junkie, to meet us at the Brimfield Flea Market in Massachusetts, one of the largest flea markets in the country. Here is where you can find the statement, one of a kind pieces. Yep. They shared their scavenging secrets. Go for the architectural and the unusual. Really look at condition and thoroughly inspect it. And buy what you love. You may be keeping this for a long time. $50? Can you haggle? Oh, haggling is the most important thing you can do, but you got to do it with respect to the dealer, too. Don't be afraid to ask, where did this come from? Who made it? Is it unique? Our challenge for them, 100 bucks and 30 minutes to find the best deal possible. Oh, anybody can do it. I decided to take them on myself to see how an amateur can do. Here you go. John, Miller, thank you, and me. Let's shop. Let's go. First, Miller took to the aisles. I like the old egg beaters. Okay, would you take um, $10 for this? Um, I, I couldn't take 10 Anyway, we can just... Do 12 on this? Sure, let's do 12. Let's do 12. I love all the neat lamps that you have. Do they work? Uh, I believe they do. This is important to do at flea markets because if it doesn't work, you don't want to pay to have it rewired. There you go. Yes, we're in business. The lamp pair was $50. She also bought a vintage pitcher for 30 and an ice crusher for $8. This has been a lot of fun. Next was John. How cool is this? An I like Ike tie in an absolutely wonderful shape. What would it take to talk you into $20 for the tie? Mm, I couldn't do that. What could we do? I could do $35 and be the very best. $30. Let's do $30. Bucks. How's that? $30. For me, he'll do it. All right. I'll wear it. Are you, I will definitely wear it. Are you kidding me? He also bought a side table. I'm always looking for something that's unique and decorative. John talked her down from $150 to $70. This is beautiful. Then I did my shopping. Look at that tulip vase. Amazing. $125? Yeah, well, we can do better. Uh, I could make an offer of, say, $50. This looks like an ordinary corkscrew. It's a toolkit. It's like the uh, <laughs> Swedish army knife, but the French version. Well, I think maybe $15 would be a good, good starting point. I also got a silver-plated jug for $15 and a match strike, which was unique and vintage from France, discounted to $20. I love it. Time to show our goods. Okay, guys, how'd we do? Well, that looks like everybody did pretty darn well. All <laughs> this for 300 bucks? Woo! You've got some really great stuff. We did great, but if you're really not an expert, you just have to kind of fall in love with what you're buying because right. you don't know the total worth until you get it home and get it appraised. So really, you're going to love it, and you got a bargain. You do. So, yes. But you did get all of these things appraised that you found. We did. So let's take a look and see and see how everybody really did. Okay, so this egg beater yeah. is made out of Bakelite, which is a resin made in the 20th century. A lot of jewelry. It's a lot of jewelry, made, yeah. and it's very collectible, and it really, you know, still works. So she did very nicely with this. This turned out to be about $25 to $30, and she paid $12. Okay, bucks. So she doubled her investment. The lamp, very cool, I like sculptural. The lamps, yeah. Our appraiser said if they would have been signed by the original artist, it would have been worth more, but she paid $50, so she was between $50 and $60, so she paid about, about, on target. about on target. This is the bar friend, very mad man Right, the ice crusher. Yeah, kind of fun, fun to have on your mantle yeah. or in your bar. She paid $8.30. Nice bargain. Very nice. And this is fascinating. You told me they used to make these pictures so they would fit right in the fridge. Yeah, this is from Westinghouse. So very cool. Art Deco, and it's in good shape, and it would go right in the fridge. I wish they still made them. These are my finds. Okay, how'd you do, Janice? Okay, this vase was worth 50 Not bad. We have a silver plate pitcher. I paid 15 We got it for 30 And the match striker, that is Which from Apollinaris. We, we love that. That is 
worth a lot of money too. Let me tell you how so I So it's did. worth more than the twenty that you paid. That's right. I got a total of hundred and seventy five dollars. Let's see Miller got she, she one sixty five but Janice, you beat the expert. Yeah, but John was the winner at two fifty mm, because wow. he bought this I like Ike tie. Yes, which he says he's gonna wear. Yeah. And I have a lot of takers here who really want this now. Would you wear this? I don't think so. This very cool bookcase. Look at How this. How much is that table? This table. You paid 70, is that right? Yeah, 125. Hey. And this is very quirky, very small. People like yeah. it. So I think we all did well, but John Bruno was the winner. I think, you did. I think, I think, I think I'm going to take you up on your invitation to do a little shopping. That would be fun. Nice to have you, Janice. Okay. Thanks.